Um, well, so we're, we're here today not because Tom's a good guy. That's that's not that's not why we're here. Uh, we're here he because <laughs> he has clearly demonstrated he has, he has clearly demonstrated that he's ready uh, for the Oak Leaf Cluster. Uh, this is a unique story. I, I kind of like uh, Tom's story because um, I've only known him for forty-five days. But I'm going to sound like I've known him for years. That's my job. Um, Tom's a Marine. He's not a former Marine because there's no such thing. He's a Marine who's also an airman. How many people do you know who are like that? You know, so he, he first joined the Marines. You know, he tells his story about uh, playing his video game as a kid. Uh, something at sea. Ancient Art of War. Ancient Art of War at sea that your dad introduced you to. Mm -hmm. And there was a Marine in that video game, and you said you wanted to be that guy, <coughs> right? Uh, and so when it came time to make that big decision, after high school, he decided, I want to be a Marine. Thanks, Dad. <laughs> Thanks. Uh, and so he joined the Marines, you know, and um, he that's where he learned his warrior ethos, right? And, and all of you know, it's a few good men and women, but he became one of those. But it didn't necessarily scratch every itch in Tom's life. Uh, and so um, he got out of the Marines, and uh, he went to work at my favorite French store, Target. <laughs> <laughs> Where I spent a lot of my money uh, shopping for goods and services and clothing. And then uh, while he was there, he probably broke store policy, and this is where I'm going to introduce Kristen. <laughs> I, didn't, I didn't mention her at first, because I wanted to bring her in at the appropriate most moment. So they broke store policy, because Kristen also worked at store <laughs> You know, and they're not supposed to be doing more than working. <laughs> they were fraternizing at Target. <laughs> And next thing you know, a year later, they got married uh, in 2001. So congratulations for breaking the rules, Marine. <laughs> yeah. Um, so that's, that's the beginning of their journey. Uh, Tom joined the Reserve in uh, 2004, I think it was. 2004. 2004 joined the Reserves um, and made it to Senior Airman and decided, you know what, I can do more. He's starting to pick up on a theme here. I can do more. And so, goes to San Diego State, studies, gets a commissioning, goes to OTS, gets a commissioning, and becomes a second lieutenant in the United States Air Force. And then we send him to Fairchild, all right? Um, Tom has pretty much done most of what you would expect a young LRO to do. Uh, in an LRS. So he's been an IDO, he's been fuels flight, done VM, um, spent some time at Fairchild, and then um, we decided to send you off to Korea. So he went off to Kunsan, spent some time at, 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 at Kunsan, and then the Air Force saw fit to send him to Milton Hall. Um, actually, interesting story, while you're at Kunsan, was it during the mid tour? During the mid tour. So this guy during his mid tour makes it back home six hours before Evelyn showed up. Oh, right? You waited. All right. Daughter was born uh, while he was on his mid tour. Got a chance to experience that. Um, did some really neat things at AFSOC uh, while you were at Millen Hall. In fact, he was at LRO. CG of the year at AFSOC, so he crushed it there, and then we decided, hey, let's just make this guy an ops officer, and then we sent him here to the Viscos. Looks like we saw on Radio OPR, saw that you'd done some VM work, and they sent him to the Viscos. While he was there, he deployed, and then deployed as an advisor on material management to the Afghan Army. And so, uh, and so we ripped Tom out of the Viscos, and 
because uh, when you look at what we're doing here on the staff right now, uh, the Air Force is going through a phase uh, where we're transitioning. Uh, some will say back to the future, um, but we're doing some really big things uh, to return us to a posture. Those of you who like football, I call it a three-point stance, right? Just ready to go as soon as the balloon pops. And when you look at Tom's records, it kind of shows someone who everything they've done up until this point prepares them for what they're going to be doing for us here on the staff. So we just put Tom uh, into our future planning and, uh, and concepts team uh, to help lead that. And, and for people who have a unique experience and can actually be dreamers for the Air Force. And so that's what Tom is going to be doing here on the staff. He's going to be an official dreamer. And I'm sure your brother's going to be like, oh, yeah, I know what that's about. <laughs> <laughs> um, but, you know, his, his records kind of show us that he's ready for that. You know, um, I, I looked at, I took a look at what people had said about him in the past, um, and his family might contest some of these statements <laughs> I'm about to make. Uh, someone called him brilliant. Okay, so not if you agree, shake your head. <laughs> this, <laughs> this is why you bring your brothers and your family to your family. Uh, They say he was versatile. <clears throat> Okay, all right. Uh, they call him a go-to leader. Okay, all right. <laughs> Track it. Um, calm under crises. All right. Okay. All right. Um, exceptional. Not short bus exceptional. Uh, always ready to work. Okay. Motivated, mm -hmm. okay. Uh, top tier. Mm -hmm. I didn't make any of that up. All that's in his records. And these are what people outside of his family said about him. And from what I just took a poll, a straw man poll, they all agreed. <laughs> and and so when you hear that, when you hear those words, uh, when you see those written, um, as as a member of the company. I will say that is what we consider proven opportunity and readiness to serve at the next higher grade. Because that's what we expect of our field grade officers. Now, I will confess, my favorite rank was captain. That was my favorite rank. Um, why? Because I knew enough to be dangerous. I had top cover, so my leadership kind of had my back. And I said a whole lot. Some of the things without tact. And then came this rank of field grade officer where I was expected to think twice, to listen longer, uh, and to be really tactful about what came out of my mouth. And so we're going to schedule a, a, a quick lobotomy for Tom uh, sometime in the near future where he gets to get those things so he learns how to be a field grade officer in the United States Air Force. Um, and the expectation changes overnight. I mean, he's going to walk out of here and, and wave goodbye to you guys and come back in. And between now and Friday, he's like, why do they treat me so differently? It's the same dude. <laughs> nope. Now you have old week busters, and we will treat you differently. Um, because you're ready for it. Because you're ready for it. So, why don't we go ahead and do this and make him a major in the United States Air all right. Publish the orders. Attention to orders. The President of the United States, acting upon the recommendation of the Secretary of the Air Force, has placed special trust and confidence in the patriotism, integrity, and abilities of Captain Thomas Wickham. In view of these special qualities and his demonstrated potential to serve in the higher grade, Captain Wickham is promoted to the grade of Major, United States Air Force, effective the first day of October 2019 by order of the Secretary of Secretary of the Air Force. Mr. Wickham and Mrs. Right. Wickham, you please come forward and come on the deck.
green, you should be able to put this in without putting it in. There you go. <laughs> Bleeding is authorized. <laughs> Support and defend the Constitution of the United States of America. The Constitution of the United States of America. Against all enemies. Against all enemies. Foreign and domestic. Foreign and domestic. That I will bear true faith. That I will bear true faith. And allegiance to the same. And allegiance to the same. That I will take this obligation freely. That I will take this obligation freely. Without any mental reservation. Without any mental reservation. Or purpose of evasion. Or purpose of evasion. That I will well and faithfully discharge. That I will well and faithfully discharge the duties of the office, the duties of the office upon, which I'm about to enter. upon which I'm about to enter. So help me God. So help me God. So I wrote it all down, you know, just to make sure I don't forget anything. Uh, thank you, Ever, for coming to this important milestone in my military career. <laughs> Uh, most of all, thank you to my family for making your way to the great state of Virginia for my third promotion ceremony as an Air Force officer. My last promotion ceremony was in Kunsan, so obviously no family were able to travel there. Uh, I am grateful to have you here, and I hope that you can make it to the next promotion ceremony. Uh, I will be remiss if I did not say thank you to Colonel Odoka for presiding over this ceremony, and Master Sergeant Sherry for helping us set it up on such, such short notice. I do really appreciate it. To my co-workers in A4R, I am glad that you knew me at least for a short time as a captain. I will not stand here that I, and tell you that I know everything about being a great captain, but I am also glad that I can learn from all of you on how to be a great major. To me, I do not have a grand leadership philosophy, but it is rooted in my background as a young infantryman. I have two basic concepts that I try to live by. One is that our work should motivate us, 
and the other is that we should leave that work better than we found it. As a leader, I hope to help with both both aspects. Thanks again. All right, ladies and gentlemen, that concludes today's ceremony. We have refreshments in the back, and thank you for coming. Woo! <laughs>